The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. There's a girl, she's a star, she's got style, Steffi Star, you see her face around the town, she's popular, Steffi Star. Hi, I'm Stephanie Weinstein. And I'm Meredith Keach. And we are realtors. We have a big real estate team. There's 11 of us in mm -hmm. Easton, mm -hmm. and we sell all over. We sell all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> and we sold Suzanne Bump a house, and yes, she is did. here with us we today. We did. Oh. oh my God, that was so exciting! <laughs> a former state uh, auditor, state rep, labor and workforce secretary. That's right, with Deval Patrick. Yeah, yeah. No, and I am so happy in that home. You really knew what I needed, and uh, and steered me in the right direction. Yeah. We really do. We don't use yeah. the term steering, Suzanne. Right. We don't want to get in trouble. That's fair housing. Yes, no. Fair housing. You, yeah, we can't say directed, that. Directed, maybe. You, you found <laughs> the right home for me. You said, I want a water view. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I yes. want a nice yard. Yeah. I want to be in Easton. Oh, yeah. I want to walk to town. Yes. Yes, I did. I did. Yes. Yep. But yeah. Being in this little village setting was really imp important yes. to me. Yes. Well, I'd been... My husband and I had had a home in Great Barrington, and mm. we were in Housatonic, which is the little village in the northern end of uh, of Great Barrington, out in the Berkshires. And I just wanted to have that. I wanted to be able to um, to walk out and meet my neighbors and buy a newspaper. If I'm, not that I frankly do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you get the idea. You know, yeah, right. a coffee shop and yes, and, yep. and just have that feeling. I just, I just love that being able to, you know, see people on the street and have you know neighborly conversation. Yes, so I'm I, really happy yes. in the East, and the wonderful people is you know, it's not just the, it's not just the location and the historic buildings. Though I also, really I mean, like but that. you are in the best location. Yeah, oh, I am. surrounded really by impressed. all the historic buildings. But yes. yes. Well, there's a movement back towards that um, traditional New England center mm -hmm. with combination of retail, residential, commercial. Yeah, um, that's smart growth. Doug King has yeah. got a couple of them. Yeah, and it really, um, it really contributes to a sense of community. Yes. You want a gathering yes. place. Yes. Uh, a, a, you know, a couple of focal points of activity yes. and. Uh, yeah. So, and that's how you know. I haven't. I haven't lived in this area since I grew up in the town of Whitman. So I was twenty years in Whitman and twenty oh. years in Braintree, roughly speaking, and then twenty years in the Berkshires, and now I'm here. Oh. So I'll finish out my last twenty years <laughs> in <laughs> Easton. You. In Easton. Yeah. yeah. And you have a truly special spot, though. Yeah. 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 You Very know, true. I do love that neighborhood feels. I have a listing right now in uh, Milton, but all the neighbors have been coming in, yeah. introducing themselves, right. saying, this is the greatest neighborhood. We all watch out for each other. Yeah. We have a walk-in club in the morning at 7 a.m., yeah. all the women. I'm like, yeah. I love this. Yes. I want to buy this house. No. Yeah. no, it's great. And the Y, I can walk to the Y. And, oh, yeah. You know, I have an exercise class now. Yes. I'm really... You now, know, that I'm in, now that I'm in it, retirement. Girl. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the neat thing about our business, too, is I think of that when I'm kind of starstruck with someone or... Like Suzanne. It, like Suzanne. And, or like a, <laughs> a doctor. Like I mm -hmm. hold them in has such high esteem. And I think, oh, my God. And I get, kind of shrink a little bit. But then I say... They need a house too, and right. I'm curious what they like for housing. Mm -hmm. Do they like walkability? Do they want to be on the outskirts? Do they, where do they want to be? Do they want to be in the city? And what's their house like? And where do they want the sun to rise and set? All that right. is such individual for absolutely right. every one of us, which is pretty right. neat. Well, Easton has done such a great job, and this, I really appreciate this of um, of pres preserving mm -hmm. open spaces and um, and architectural uh, you know, features, the historical features. It really. It, it really kind of called to me. I had I remember, uh, I, I 
the memory before I came to Easton to live, the, the only memory I had of Easton was as a kid seeing the Oaks Ames Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh. that just made, I, mean, I really appreciate architecture and art and all. And uh, it just made a lasting impression on me. And whenever I found that I could live near Oak Ames Hall, well, that was the that was it. Yeah. I didn't even have to go into my house before I knew I wanted <laughs> I, to buy. It. I was there last night. You were? Yes, I was at an event for UNICEF, and um, while Dahlia, uh, she uh, gave us a tutorial on flower arranging. So I came home oh, with the oh. centerpiece for Thanksgiving, and wow. It's beautiful. The flowers, I mean, I'd like to think it was what I did, but it's not. It was the flowers that she chose. Or, oh, and I learned a whole bunch too, but oh. yeah. yeah she, um, did it. she did a demonstration for the garden club. Mm -hmm. um, and although I'm not a member, it was open to everybody, yeah. so I went. Um, and what she was able to do with individual flowers to really bring out yes. the beauty you know, by manipulating yes. the, the petals, really Ooh, opening them yes. up. That's what I it learned was, last night. I had yeah, no idea. No, no. What she was able to do with tulips um, and oh, and also roses. Oh, you, you can you can understand why she's in such oh, demand. Oh, That's the a colors real, are the, the artistry. Stunning. The artistry. I've seen that on Instagram. Oh, you have. You have. I have, and I was. Are you floored. trying to get Susanna on Insta? I am trying to get Susanna on Instagram. We're going to set up an <laughs> yeah, account for her. Somebody has to help me. We've got to get you <laughs> Maybe set Adam. up. Adam, Adam, please. Adam's our tech guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He'll get you started. Yeah. So, oh, you were at Oak Games last night. Yes. I last time I was there was for a rocking party, <laughs> upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was upstairs. Yeah. It's really. Well, nice. you know, the Lions Club beautiful. is doing another rocking party on the first. Friday of December, which is which kicks off the holiday right. festival yes. up at Oaks Ames Hall. Yeah. We're having um, a local group called Divas, um, uh, Divas with a Twist. I love it. They, they're <laughs> Sounds five, like Meredith and I. <laughs> five, five gals, yeah. um, great voices, oh, wide repertoire. I love it. Great dance band. I I saw them. Down, I want to go. I found them down in uh, down in Taunton at a at a venue called the District. It's former the former um, uh, District Court house uh, oh. down there, and now it's a performance venue. And I saw Divas oh. with now. Uh, will you walk with home? a twist? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can. Yeah, yeah. And I want to, you know, leave the parking for people who really need, need it coming from a yeah. distance. Oh, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> Will they shuttle from the parking lot behind Farmer's Daughter? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Mm. Um, but that may be a good idea. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to ask the. Well, planners. I mean, you guys are hooting it up for late, late yeah. night. Yeah. Right. When is the yeah. date? December first. See the first. I or think second, it's the right? first. first. Yeah. Oh, it's the first. If it's the first Friday. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. Next yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Next Friday. Will well, ECAP be yeah. there, Adam? Yeah. Of course. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, they did a great concert last year um, that I was involved with uh, again to kick off the holiday weekend, and it was Tom Rush. Oh, um, I heard that. I was mean, great. you have to be of a certain age, yeah. like me, yeah. uh, to uh, remember Tom Rush, uh, but he. He has an amazing following, and people were coming from all over yeah, to I hear Tom Rush. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was a big to-do. Amazing. Yeah. 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 So, you know, he was he was part of the modern folk era and played uh, a, a lot in Cambridge um, and really got... Um, uh, got a lot of other young artists started and still and he still does that he still does that uh and he he's wonderful he's he's no kid but he is uh, he's, he's just a great human being as well as a terrific uh, How songwriter and performer and so for the event friday night will they have food and drinks or yes is it just a yes concert? no there will be uh there will be refreshments oh um, we love a snack yeah yeah, yeah. No doubt there will be uh, raffles. I mean, we always, of oh, course, you know, right. we, 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 it's about the fun, you know, it's about fun, but it's also about fundraising. Right. Because um, the Lions support a wide number of, uh, mm -hmm. of programs in the, in the community. Uh, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's a great, it's a great group of people. I'm really glad that I um, was, uh, was asked to join the club. Oh, it's great. Yeah. My mom's loved it too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's our largest volunteer base in Easton. Too. It is. It is. And so that's why I, I just, frankly, I tried, you know, well, being the auditor, I'm always interested in efficiency. And I thought, well, <laughs> I can support all these all these organizations in town if I just support the Lions Club. Yes. Then I can have yes. some fun while I'm uh, yes. while I'm doing so. So, yeah. So, so I have good. a question for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we were talking about some of your resume items, so to speak. And I just kept looking at it and thinking, wow, oh my God, wow, she did that. Oh my God, wow. And then I thought, when you approach an audit, first, can you explain what an audit is Sure. in that capacity as state auditor? And then I'd love to talk about your personality and superpowers that make you good at an audit. Okay, so um, in Massachusetts, every every state, virtually every state, has uh, a position of state auditor. Uh, most of them are appointed by the legislature uh, in their respective states. Uh, but in in Massachusetts and in other states, we are elected, and uh, and and everybody's everybody's audit functions are, are different because you're, you're they're set forth by um, by the statutes in the individual states and in Massachusetts um, what we do it's not financial auditing obviously we look at how state government is spending money um, but we don't look at it just in terms of the balance sheets to make sure that they can account for uh, for all of the revenue that they've taken in because lots of agencies collect fees and fines and the like, um, or uh, or how they are spending money. I mean, we care about that, but really our focus is on performance. Are agencies meeting their mission? Are they following the rules uh, for how they spend money? Are they getting the results that they, uh, that are expected of them? Uh, you know, so are they are the programs that they're designing uh, effective? Are people really being helped by them? Are we really building the roads as efficiently as we can? And so uh, and and so th those are the questions that we ask when we are conducting an audit. Uh, now, there are, my God, I can't even remember how many state agencies there are. <laughs> Don't ask I, me. I, when I stepped away, <laughs> I really stepped away. Um, so there are about two hundred of two hundred state um, state departments uh, that we would audit, and every agency wow. would see us about every three years. Now you can't audit the whole of an agency. Um, if you think about just the Department of Public Health, I mean, think of all the programs the Department of Public Health. You know, it's all about you know, it's vaccinations and obesity and it's uh, uh, you know it's disease control and it's uh, it's a wide range of activities. And so you you have to um, look at where uh, things are most likely to go astray uh and it could be actually in a spending area but you might also ask questions about why is it taking so long to get um an approval uh for for something in a particular you know in a particular program um and so you you're trying to make the most of the resources that you had so you look at risk where's the area of greatest risk that something is not going according to uh to plan and so that's what we look for in our audits. So it's about compliance, it's about um, performance, it's about outcomes, it's how well people are serving the, the public. And then so you type up this report and then you take the report and give it to? We give it to the agencies, obviously, the governor's office. Um, we give it to the legislature um, because you know, they want to know how the agencies that they're funding, um, and in many cases, advocating for within the budget, um, how well they are performing. Um, sometimes, you know, there are lots of reasons for agencies not fulfilling their mission or or, or failing. And, and, you know, more, a, a lot of times it has to do with the fact that they are under-resourced, mm. that they really don't have um, the technical skill that they need, that they don't have the, uh, you know, the, uh, the IT resources um, that they that they need, um, you know, and, and it, it's often a matter of of, um, 
you know, just poor priority setting and, and management as well. Um, and then we made a point of, um, of doing a lot of outreach to uh, groups um, across the state that have an interest in these state agencies. So particularly, we spend a lot of time on, um, on child welfare, and there are lots of child advocacy groups around the state. So we would make sure that they had the audit too. And actually, when we were planning audits, we also reached out to a lot of different advocacy groups to say, where do you see problems? You know, mm -hmm. what's your What's your, you know, your main gripe with this, um, with this agency? How can we make it work better? And that's, that's the whole thing for me. Um, that's what's motivated me throughout my life in government is how can we do this better? How can we do this most effectively? How can we build confidence in the, you know, in the public that government is capable of delivering services effectively and efficiently um, and, you know, that we really care about about the uh, the contributions that they make through their taxes right. to, mm -hmm. uh, to the support of, uh, of our government. So it's, it, for me, it's always been a matter of public trust, building the public trust. Right. And did, did, the, did um, when Suzanne was coming in, right, were people like, oh, watch out. Right. The audience yeah, the auditors are always more enthusiastically uh Hi everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no they you know, pushed out the door and then they are <laughs> welcomed. Yeah. Yeah, the the, the the goodbyes are always uh, right. yeah. yeah cheerful. It's been, it was yeah, really cheerful. great working yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. See you, you know, in five years. You know, but that was an important thing. Um maintaining a level of professionalism so that at uh so that agencies know what to expect when we're coming in, so there's no surprises. We tell them in advance what we're going to be looking um, at, not necessarily looking for, but, mm -hmm. but looking at. Um, there's a lot of, uh, so there's a lot of prep that goes into an audit. We don't just show up one day and, you know, and say, open your books. Uh, so it is, and, and then just maintaining a professional working relationship, just objectivity, um, efficiency on our part uh, as well was so was key to that. And do, I know it probably varies, but is like is your standard audit like two days, two weeks? Two oh months, no, no, two years, no months, months. months. Um, it takes a long time because we have to follow um, standards uh, and procedures that are set by the federal government. Oh. Uh, there are government. Um, uh, generally accepted government accounting standards, auditing standards rather. And um, well, there are accounting standards as well, but <laughs> auditing standards in this case. Um, and so they require, uh, they, they require a lot of uh, documentation of your planning process, how it is that you decided to look at what you looked at, what it is exactly that you're looking at, what are the methods that you're going to use. Um, I'm everything. Out. <laughs> yeah. I'm everything, out. Yeah, everything, <laughs> no, everything, everybody, everything you looked at, everybody you talked oh, to. Wow. No, it is extraordinarily detailed. And the, the, the reason is so that, again, so that the public can have confidence that this was done independently, that nobody was telling you what your findings should be, um, and that they would reach the same conclusions you did by following the same the same procedure. Well, I think it's amazing. I mean, it's the true checks and balances, yeah, right? Yeah, well, that's it. Right. That's it. It's all about accountability. Yeah. It's all about accountability. We have on a small scale, I'm on the Recreation Commission, and we've yeah. hired uh, an independent consultant to take a look at all of the recreation facilities that we have in town. Now, it's not quite a true audit in a sense, but, you know, having been a lifetime citizen here. Was you this know, your idea, it. Meredith? It was not. Uh you, I can tell you, you know, and they, they came to me and said, what are we forgetting? You know, which ones? But to see it all mapped out is going to be so exciting. No, it is. Yeah. It is. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, the, uh, the old adage is that, uh, you know, with better information, you make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And right. so that's that's how I looked at, at audits, that they should be a tool for making government work better rather than, you know, a weapon to bring, right. to bring somebody or something down. Right. Yeah, but it probably could be used for that too. Well, yeah, sometimes that is indeed the effect, yeah. but yeah. that's not 
that's not the mindset that right. you should right. go right. in with. Because right. you've got to be, you know, it's it's objectivity. It's oh, you, right. you're, it's that's, and and we get, um, and Stephanie's we, died because <laughs> I keep laughing. I keep thinking about. Can you imagine if we told the team? We're being audited. <laughs> Just be auditing yeah. our real estate team of eleven. <laughs> yeah, no, it is uh, for efficiency. <laughs> yeah, efficiency. It might be helpful. <laughs> yeah, we really could use. Well, you. we did. We met with a marketing person. That's true. Right to That's do true. exactly what you're saying to right. have right. someone to give a, a look, top down look because. When you're just boots on the ground with anything, you're running at a frantic pace. We all are. That's right. And mm-hmm. it's hard to be objective. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes you're just doing things when you don't really know why. Right. And you don't know, you don't always uh, know where your bottlenecks are. So right. if we're looking at an, an approval process for an agency, or if we're looking at at case management within, uh, you know, complaint resolution with that before the uh, Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination, and you just you delays, delays, delays. Well, well, why? You know, right. so we mm-hmm. it's it's hard for folks who are, as you say, occupied with the day to day operations to be able to step back and do that root cause analysis uh, and and really. So that's what that's what we did. I mean, and I was able to to get back to the second half of your question. Um, I was able, I think, to do I think a good job, and we've got lots of awards that the agency never um, received before, uh, you know, and, and under any of my predecessors. Um, but I really benefited, I think, from the fact that I had been a legislator, so I understood about policy. I understood about about constituent needs and you know public service. And immediately, before, um, although that was way back in my youth, as I say, I was in the 80s and early 90s that I was in the legislature. Um, and then, though, but I immediately before I ran, I was in Deval, cabinets, Deval Patrick's cabinet, as you said, Labor uh, and Workforce Development Secretary. And there was, so I'd done policy, but now I was doing operations. And I was, we spent in the um in workforce development area we spend millions and millions of dollars on um training programs you know we run the unemployment centers uh and we make grants to organizations for you know for skills enhancement across a wide across the whole state and across a wide range of of um of fields of uh of of endeavor i and it was i was always asking the questions well how do we know who should get this money? How are we assessing right. mm-hmm. outcomes? Uh, and and I was there during the 2008 recession when we had just like during the past uh, during during COVID we had you know oodles of money <laughs> coming in right. um, to to try to help us you know through the recession when a lot of job loss. Uh, and so who are the programs we ought to give this money to? And I was so frustrated that there wasn't good data about outcomes of these services. We could tell you how many people right. entered a program, yeah. got resume writing help, or they actually went through a skills training program. We could tell you how many people and how long it took. We couldn't tell you if, if they were successful in getting jobs, though. And I just thought, well, we need more information. Somebody has to be in government that's pushing agencies to collect the data that can be used to determine how effectively we are spending money. And that's why I decided to run for um, for auditor. Steph, I think we need Suzanne. I... That is exactly what we talked about the other day. <laughs> We're like, we're spending all this money and right. what's the outcome? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. What is, what is yeah. it doing yeah, what for we, us? But, you right. Know, but you're getting yeah. bang for your buck. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. so Do you important. have the right people? Do they have the right training? You know, people, a lot of members of the public, and I appreciate why, and occasionally I'm one of them myself, you know, you see something that goes wrong and you just think, well, the people must be really stupid, you know, mm-hmm. how, you know, or, 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 or they're corrupt, mm-hmm. um, that they're not getting, they're not doing a better job. Um, and there were, that's rarely, rarely the case mm-hmm. that it's an individual um, that kind of went off the rails. Uh, there are lots of reasons for agency failures. Uh, uh, and and I you know I hate to say I remember 
that, which I hate to repeat, which I've already said, um, a lot of agencies are actually under-resourced because they, the legislature is very good at identifying needs um, and uh, passing laws. They're not so good at actually providing the funding that mm -hmm. <laughs> enables right. agencies mm -hmm. to right. do all of the, what they're supposed to do. And so they get a new responsibility, and of course they focus on implementing that, and it means that they kind of take their eye off the ball in terms of what they already were doing. Um, and it's uh, it, it's hard when the budget is as big as it is uh, for people to, to appreciate that it's really not always enough money. Right. Um, this, the, the skills training hasn't been there. As I said, the IT isn't, the IT isn't there. The ongoing, um, you know, the ongoing oversight. Uh, because when, when there are layoffs in state government, they don't lay off the direct care workers. They lay off the people in the back room. Well, it's the people in the back room that are doing the counting and the oversight oh, right. for right. the, for the program implementation. So, uh, you know, it, government is a pretty complex thing, um, but it's the principles, as you are seeing, as we're discussing, the principles are applicable everywhere. Right. So, <laughs> it's, so, you know, it, it's, yeah. not, it's not just the, uh, you know, the public sector uh, where you need this oversight. It goes on in the, in the private sector, and, and you guys are looking for it too. So how can when we do you it better? came into your, the agency of auditor, mm -hmm. one of the uh, pieces that I read was that you made some sweeping changes within mm -hmm. that office right. as well. So on sort of a, a personal level, what was that like to do that? You come in in this role to oversee the state auditing, and then you all of a sudden turn towards the office that you're taking over. What was that like to then make dramatic changes there? Well, um, I mentioned that we have to audit to government standards, and those standards require that every three years, a team of auditors from other states um, gets assembled by the uh, National Association of State Auditors, um, and they get sent in, and they audit the auditor's office mm. um, to ensure that uh, that we are, in fact, meeting government standards, which include staff competency. And so, although it's sort of required, uh, it wasn't being done um, mm -hmm. under my predecessor. And I, uh, and so the first thing I did, in fact, before I even, he actually cooperated mm -hmm. in, in this, um, before I even took office, as soon as I got elected, um, I reached out to the auditors association and said, please, you know, send a, a team in to, to, you know, tell me, tell me what I've inherited, you know, inherited. <laughs> right. <laughs> what I've inherited. Um, and so as a result of that, there were a lot of changes that, that were made. Um, there were a lot of staff that hadn't been properly um, properly trained. They weren't getting proper oversight. So it meant a lot of personnel uh, changes. Uh, it also meant a lot of procedural changes because we weren't the, we weren't auditing to government standards. The, the office that doesn't mean the office wasn't doing um, audit work and it was and it still was meaningful work. But if the law requires the auditor to audit to government standards, well, I'm a lawyer. I'm going to audit to government standards. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Uh, you know, I want to build that public trust. So, um, so there was a lot of work that we did in the first couple of years, in particular, just, um, uh, you know, revamping things. A lot of staff training. A lot of staff training was uh, was done. Um, and a lot of other kinds of staff development because that was really important to me um, that people really were happy with their work that they were you know they they understood that they were doing work that was meaningful that they were going to be rewarded for their professional development because you need those kinds of incentives in order to keep you motivated right. and engaged um, and frankly there aren't a lot of uh, there was a practical reason for doing it as well as kind of my altruistic motives there, um, 
it's that it's it's hard to hire people into this work in state government because if you have these talents, you're going to work for one of the big, you're going to work for a much bigger company that's going to pay you a lot more right. than the, sure. than the than the state auditor's office is going to. So, if you can't um, give them that money, you've got to make sure that the job is as meaningful and they feel as empowered as they can. And we, you know, created per career pathways. So there was a lot of work that we did there. Um, and all that professional development stuff that I did, I mean, that's as important to me as the audits that we, that we did. Um, so we really gave people a lot of opportunity and therefore they worked better. That sounds like a massive amount of work. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. I am speechless. Right? I mean, yeah, no, it was uh, like where you break it down. Right. So you've got this whole thing, and then you're able to bring it down to these pieces to just to implement all of that. Yeah. It seems like almost overwhelming. Well, we developed a strategic plan um, and set priorities, and every decision that we made. Uh, and not just me in the auditor's office, but managers got training in this. I mean, everything, every decision that they made was whether it was going to further any of the goals in the strategic plan. Uh, so this, and which included uh, professional development um, and you know our good use of resources and and our um, uh, you know communication with the larger community. Uh, so we, uh, I'm really proud of what we did there. So you come in, you have the auditors come in to audit the auditors, and then they give you a roadmap of sorts. Yeah, they, well, they tell you they tell you all of the areas in which you're failing. Um, we're failing in every area that they measured. Um, okay. So, <laughs> so but you, then it's up to you. Yeah. Just like when we would do an audit, we would tell you what's wrong. We could give you some suggestions as to um, areas, you know, like an approach that you should take, mm -hmm. but auditors don't tell you exactly what to do. Um, it's up to you to figure it out. So particularly with the state, with, with the, not the peer review people, but when we were doing an audit, we couldn't tell an agency exactly how they should solve their problem because then there would, then we, the concern would be that when you go back and audit them a few years later, um, that you would be assessing oh, the validity right. of your own, Got the it. efficacy of yeah. your own, you know, uh, of your own mm -hmm. recommendations. Right. So again, to keep it completely objective and and, and independent, you you follow those rules. So that's yeah. important, though, right? Because <laughs> without this data that you've indicated, you can't. When you look at, when you meet and say, okay, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? And how can right. we be better without without those data points? Yeah, you, you need that can't measure. figure that out. Yeah, there's another adage is, you know, you can't, you, um, you can't manage what you can't measure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it was looking at, uh, at licensing at the registry or it was looking at case management at the Department of Children and Families, um, those were tough audits. The the, oh, the Department of Children mm -hmm. and Families. Um, that that that's an agency that I was really familiar with um, when I first went to state government, which was right out of college. I was an uh, I started as an intern, and then I was an aide, and then I got elected. Uh, the it it was called at that time. They were, the big thing was that they were trying to reorganize how we provided support to um, to families and uh, who were going through tough times and and there could have been abuse or neglect in the in the household uh, you know and so at that point they were revamping it, it the new thing was it was going to be the Department of Social Services and they were going to do so much so much better and then through all the years that I was in government social workers were saying we need more people we need more money um, and that has just been a constant um the work and it it's not you've got to recognize um that I mean, the work that they do is becoming harder and harder um because the prevalent because of the prevalence of uh, of drug abuse oh, right. um and and now uh the and the folks that are falling into um uh, into poverty uh because of income inequality um but the but the 
drug abuse uh, is really taking a toll on families and particularly on kids. Right. And kids. And uh, and, and the, those are really tough roles at the Department of Children and Families. Really tough roles. Um, Steph, are you speechless? <laughs> <laughs> so... Step like yeah. meeting out for drinks a little bit better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is a lot. No, 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 right. no, it's, it's, no, no. I, but I, I loved that work. But after yeah. twelve years, um, after twelve years, I just decided to let somebody else uh, do it. We accomplished a, a really. We did. A, you know, a, a lot. Um, in 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 the tools, uh, the focus on IT. I really. I. I can't talk with any sophistication about uh, IT systems and the like, but I knew we needed to be investing in them. Um, I was able to have, during my tenure, a couple of really good IT people who listened. That's the most important quality in an IT person. It's not them coming in and, and telling you what you need. It's the staff telling them mm. what they need. Right. What are the tools that they need to uh, to handle data, to acquire data, to clean it up? Because uh, a lot of agencies, you take raw data and you've got to turn it into something meaningful, um, so that you can uh, you know conduct an audit. So that it, it, and so it was. Uh, we spent a lot. The legislature was really good. We got money through the capital. Um, capital budget, the governor's office always supported, you know, even though we crank out these audits, this mm -hmm. tell, you know, we're telling whether it was Deval Patrick or Charlie Baker, yeah, they're missing the mark here, and this is a waste of money, and this is a waste of time. They always, they always um, gave us the money to invest in IT that we needed. And what do you do when you have those stressful audits? What, do you, what does Suzanne Bump do to decompress? Um... I don't know. What do I do to decompress? <laughs> are you asking me like what my hobbies are? <laughs> yeah. What do I do? Right? When you well, I had no you... hobbies. Yeah. I don't have I, I just I just I'm just acquiring hobbies now. <laughs> now that I'm retired. Um so uh no, so I I'm, I always love to be outside. When Paul mm. and I my, my late husband, um when Paul and I had the house in the Berkshires, um that was how we managed our stress. We would go out there on weekends. We would throw ourselves into uh, yard work. Oh, um, and one of smart. my particular, one of my particular um, uh, uh, hobbies out there was building stone walls. Oh, I wow. loved, yeah, stone wall create, you know, retaining walls to create an overlook. We, there was a small pond in the in yeah. the on the property. Uh, uh, so and for an overlook there, and then uh, created a berm because um, we were on a fairly busy road, uh, but a, a berm with, a again, a retaining wall and plantings above that. And then I built a stone wall just to build a stone wall in the in the back. Is it uh, fair to say that organization and structure <laughs> are your comfort zone? I mean, why does it not surprise me that you like building stone walls? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I also <laughs> yeah. I guess you're you're figuring me out pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, so that was a that was a big deal. We went out there originally because we both were interested in classical music, and we out there because we were going to the Boston Symphony when we were in town, and then we started going out for summers, um, you know, and with oh, friends. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, Tanglewood. Oh, yeah, love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a new movie. Um, Bradley Cooper is starring as Leonard Bernstein, who oh. that famous conductor, West Side yeah. Story yeah. composer, conductor. I mean, he spent a lot of time at Tanglewood. I was just listening to the radio talking about the movie and the amount of time that they spent at Tanglewood. Oh, oh that's, cool. that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Maybe I mean, say yeah. more. <laughs> we love you, Bradley. <laughs> He's a big fan of our podcast. <laughs> Should yeah. we talk about daylight savings? Oh, well, sure. Suzanne, can you do anything <laughs> yeah, to no. get rid of it? To get rid of it. This no. is Meredith's yeah. pet no, I, peeve. I hate, I, yeah, I hate this. It's so terrible. Changing time is terrible. It makes no, it makes no sense. 
Makes no sense. No, and um, and scientists say it's not good for us. No, not at all. I no. mean, data proves it that it's yeah. not good for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not good economically, and it's yeah. not good for our health. Well, right. Suzanne, can you do anything? Not about that. <laughs> I mean, I just don't understand why we, Arizona did it, why we just, and some people say, well, we got to be on Atlantic time or this time or that time. And yeah. I don't really care. It just, just stop changing time twice a year. I know. Year. You can't, you, it really does have to be done across the country. I yeah. mean, I can understand why Massachusetts doesn't do it alone because we are so connected, well, to the whole of the East Coast, right. you know, to whether, mm -hmm. to New York yeah. and to Washington yeah. and, um, you know, and with the importance of, of the Northeast, uh, you know, and down to the Mid Atlantic, uh, you know, to the rest of the nation and to the economy, we we can't do it. We and Massachusetts can't do it on its own. I well, mean, but... I've been told that the northern states will follow us in a heartbeat if we can just get Connecticut and New York to do it. Then we'd be good. But well, New York, I, I don't know but New about York. That. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why would New York want to still do it? I don't get it. I, I guess know. they have their uh, agriculture. I don't know. I haven't. I have not. I have not looked into it. Um, I just complain about it. Like, yeah, same. Like, we love, same. We love <laughs> complaining about it. I mean, by two and three o'clock, we're dead. Yeah. In the afternoon, we yeah. need oh, naps. Yeah. It's no, ridiculous. No, exactly. We yeah. can't function. No. There's an increase in car accidents yes. after yes. the time change. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's wild. It's, it's bad. I sat with Senator Kennedy at a function. He said, it is never going away. Oh, God. Mm. No, now, I will say, so. I uh, did my best to embrace it this year. And I walked um, starting at 5.30 in the morning and the light would come up at 5.45 and it did make me feel better to just do that rather than, you know, waking a little bit later um, and just kind of power through it. So, well, that's a remedy I'm never going to try. Okay. Yeah, I can assure <laughs> you. 5.45. You don't get up at 5.30, no. Suzanne? You like to no. sleep a little bit later? Yeah. But yeah. you probably are a late person too. Um, no, I always was tr tried to be in bed between 10 and 1030. Because you're efficient with your work. I was, I really feel that I need the full eight plus hours of sleep. Mm. So I, you Does know, anyone you... really sleep eight hours? I'm I up. Had, I had a good run last night. You did? I I'm did. jealous. Did ten, you? 10 to 1. Did you? Up, do my thing. Go back until 5. Did you use any type of an aid? I did not. Just water these days. <laughs> okay, I'm taking the fifth on that. One. <laughs> I think I need an aid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was up. Uh, maybe. I was telling Suzanne before you got here, I was up at three. Oh, and done. I'm done. I was done. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're up. Your body's up. Here yeah. Go. So I started watching oh, Netflix. Oh. I'm watch. I do watch. Oh, but that's really bad for you. Oh, it's terrible. You're not supposed to put the TV on. Who does no. that? No. And I have books on my phone that yeah. I could read because I can't read a book. It's too dark. With I need the light, the whole thing. So I have a lot of books on my phone, but I just... I don't even sleep with my phone near me anymore. It's on the other side of the bedroom so that I'm not tempted to... to you know, so I, I put it down and then I get into bed and I'm not tempted to... Oh, just look at one yeah. more thing. Right. No. I know. No. Instagram makes me fall back asleep. I don't know if that's because I need a new reading prescription or what it is, but it definitely helps me go back to sleep quickly. As well, as I'll have is. to get on Instagram before I can to figure yes. out that. Yes, <laughs> Adam. Adam, Adam be no, that. you being off Instagram is terrible, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm barely. I don't even post on Facebook. I. Kind of sometimes look at feeds. I, I get mean, emails so saying nice. somebody it's has wonderful. posted. On I'm I don't jealous. know that you should get on social media. I know. Why? Yeah. You really don't need it. I had this conversation well, with my 12 year old. Like, there's no upside for you. What did he want? Insta? She wants oh, she, Snap sorry. and oh. be real. Oh, yeah. No. There's no upside for her. No. There's only negatives. No, right. unfortunately, though, because we've lost our local paper. Yeah. Um, it's hard to keep up with what's going on in town. It is really hard to, to follow organizations, to see where the performances are, that you know, the, mm -hmm. the concerts, right? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Where where yep. all kinds of activities yep. are. Yep. Well, even you know what's going on at Langwater Farm. Yep. Uh, That's true. You know how Meredith bring back the Eastern Journal. Yeah. Well, yeah, please. you're right. We get it from, from social media. I post a lot of stuff like that. Right. Like, yeah, that's that's up. the only yeah. way we need it back. Know. 
That's the only way you can. Why did they get rid of it? Well, because no one was buying it, you know, and so therefore nobody's buying it. So the advertisers weren't going to advertise in it. And it was just a death spiral. It's, you know, for the whole, for all of print media, it's just been a death spiral since, uh, you know, with the advent of social media. Uh, well, people like sound bites, right? 140 characters. Yeah. Like they want little pieces. Yeah. And if you want more and you're yeah. inquisitive and you want to read more, then fine. But to that point, I guess that that is the benefit of yeah. social media, right? Yeah. But you know, so I think it's really detrimental to community life and certainly to to government um, for people to not know what's going on. Because if you don't know and if you don't have any way of knowing, you're going to assume the worst, <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> because it's right. just human nature. Um, well, you know, nature. I want to give credit to Connor Reed, our town administrator, because under his leadership, he, and at least this is from my vantage point, uh, we just had a vote for a, uh, new municipal buildings. Mm-hmm. And he, the outreach that he did was extraordinary. It was. They did it via social media. They did it newspaper. They did direct mail. He yep. did podcasts. He did interviews. He met with people publicly. I mean, it, it would, he left no stone unturned. No, no, that is um, that is so. Uh, you know, the board of selectmen uh, had been working on this really for years. Yep. Um, and the capital planning folks um had been working on this for years and uh and it really and it really paid off you know but on the other hand how many people voted I, it won by 60 votes yeah but and it, i was one of the jerks who thought i was busy that day and i was there for the town meeting it was a landside vote and i thought you know what it's going to be fine at the vote i've got so many things going on so for me to take time out and go do it and it won by only 60 votes yeah I didn't. I didn't realize what the margin was. I was just focused on two thousand, the, 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 the small, the, the yeah. small number of yeah, people, two thousand, who... two ish, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so, I you know I just from them. I've been in and around government all my life. I I really believe in it, and I want other people too, and to do so as well. I mean, it's the essence of yeah. our country, mm-hmm. right? Right. It's right. Democracy, um, and it's such a gift. Why would you not? Why would you not take advantage of that opportunity? Um, Steph? Suzanne Bump for president. <laughs> <laughs> I vote. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and you know, You'll pass. <laughs> age is not an issue these days. Oh, right? right. Uh, no. <laughs> not at all. No. No. So, no, thank you. Oh, all right. Well, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Suzanne enjoying her retirement. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but, um, but at any rate, it's great to be in Easton. I'm really... It's a good really, town. I'm really happy to yeah. be here. I think we, I think we are well. I think we are well governed. I think we've got a lot of great, great. people in uh, in positions, and um, and just the vibrance of the community, uh, and the focus on kids, not just the, not just the, um, uh, the sports activities, but the raising multicultural mm. um, kids organization, uh, the Wings of Hope, mm-hmm. um, but. It, there are there are good adults that are really engaged, um, yeah. you know, in really meaningful ways with uh, with our kids, and I think that obviously that makes a big difference too. You know, something that I have noticed though, and I'm not sure it's uh, a fault or truly a defect or, or not, but most of the downsizers that we work with move out of town. Mm. Few are staying. Or moving into town. I mean, we do have three over 55 communities, and they don't have a high turnover rate, um, at least as of the last four years, very low turnover. Yeah. Um, would you find that too, Steph? Yeah. I mean, I wonder if it's the same with all the towns. Right. I mean, where are the downsizers going? They're moving to Florida. Plymouth is a big place. They're moving was a big to Plymouth. Place. They're moving to the water. A lot of people. Yeah, I guess to the water. That's what it is. Down well, the Cape, Plymouth too has that real walkability, mm-hmm. right? Like the center of town in Easton does. Yep. Um, well, what about that development? What's it called? It's a town within Plymouth. Oh, Pine Hills. Yes, uh, Pine yeah, Hills. Right. It's lovely. True. They have their yeah. own post office, restaurants. Yeah. 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 And and that's a great an, place to be. There's another one that, uh, is it Red? Red Brook? Mill? Red Mill Oh, in Norton. In Norton? Norton? No, yeah. this was down in, this is down Oh, Redbrook. In, Redbrook. Yeah. Oh, also, so that was an also extension down, of Pine Hills. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Plymouth is so vast. I yeah. We more. Yeah. We had other downsizers that moved. Yeah. They were in Tanglewood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but they're looking, you see, they want that community feel. In a lot right. of instances, they're moving from, um, you know, a home that was on, uh, you know, in a cul-de-sac, yep. mm -hmm. and, you know, in a big house, and they were they were away from the commercial areas. Right. And they want, you know, so they're, they're moving to village settings. Is, right. You know, which is kind of what I did. Well, we just went to, we had an amazing tour last week in Milton. Oh, right. What was that Fuller called? Village. Fuller Village. So it's independent living. It so is, is that off 138? Yeah. Yep. Blue Hill Ave. So yeah. no assisted living. It's, it's not so, progressive. Oh, really? Nope. Yeah. It's just an over 62 community, basically like a condo community. There's no services as far as health care. You can bring in your own people if you want to bring your own people into yeah. your place. Um, but the calendar of events. Amazing. So you, it's a life packed. lease. Packed. So you buy into it completely affordable. I mean, affordable. Really? Yes. And you have a life lease. So let's say you pay 500 grand for your unit. You croak and um, your family gets 90%. So 10% stays 90 within. 90% back. Yep. Really? Yep. It's, it was lovely. And there's all different levels you can rent. Yep. There's the rentals. You, there's the buy-in. There's yep. the single freestanding. Um, one bedroom, two bedroom. Yep. Three, yep. three bedroom, I think I there think was. There was. One, right? Or yeah. two bedroom and a den. Yeah. Two bedroom and a den. And vibrant. Oh, I wow. mean, pickleball. I mean, every you activity really you could possibly yoga, want. Yoga, pool, activity, moving, I was lunches, They have pickleball dinners. and they don't have medical care for all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. apparently. That's not, that's not what it is. That's no, not what it is. No, yeah. just joking. I, yeah. I was aware of it. It's existence, I, but I had no idea what it lovely. really was. I am so impressed. Yeah. I love that type of living. Agreed. Hmm. To be yeah. busy every day. Yeah. And so one of the doctors there, he's he's uh, an aggressive pickleball yes. player. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried pickleball. You know, I hike, I cycle, I kayak. That's plenty. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't. It's fun. Steph ball. and I took a few lessons. We'll do it again we in did. the spring. We took it, um, yeah, with a rack. Yep. We'll Eastern do it again. Rack. It was fun. Yeah. We, until we got busy and then we couldn't take lessons yeah. again. But I want to do, I'd like, the lessons are good. Yeah, I like the lessons. We could do it with Heath too. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. He'd get mad at us if we don't. Yeah. Heath Berkowitz runs pickleball at the Brown Balloon. Brown Balloon. Yeah. yeah. He runs the tournament. Up off the of Chestnut Street. Brown, Brown Balloon Tennis, the tennis Club. Club. Off of Chestnut? Oh, no. no. Oh, you haven't seen it? No. Been there? No, I I'm, I'm, haven't played tennis. Maybe you should start playing tennis. Yeah. It's a very strong pickleball community in Easton. Yes, I yeah, I see that. I feel like is there any town that there isn't a strong pickleball community? Probably not. It's like the everyone. fastest growing sport in America. And the kids are doing it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a talent. <laughs> These are the things that I bring to the podcast, you see, while Mary's asking all these government questions. <laughs> now, where did you guys run into each other? Uh, Corfinio. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't yeah. been to Corfinio because every time I try to go to Corfinio, the bar is always packed. Yeah. And so scene. my new thing is I sit in the car and I say, Tony, you go in. I call him <laughs> Anthony. You go in and if there's seats, text me. So <laughs> that's exactly. So he's like, there's seats. And then I came in and then I was sitting down. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know her. She please. looks, she's <laughs> adorable and she looks familiar. <laughs> Even though I changed my hair color, you're I love it. Yes, Donna, you look I've so gorgeous, and I love it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're and the just blue frame is so I, gorgeous. Yeah, everything with it too. about you. Yeah, and I said to Mara, "We go, <laughs> Susie was in a full suit." Yes. Yeah, I actually I said, thought she about is it this morning. Very I put, I put <laughs> on a work shirt. Yeah. <laughs> what did I? Put? Um, I don't know. I must you have been coming from someplace. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a couple of um, of interesting things now in my retirement. So one um, that is that I'm on the um, board of the old colony Y. Oh. Um, so uh, you're, obviously we have the Y in Easton, but mm -hmm. this is the one. This is the parent organization. I went on the uh, on the board there. Vin Moderano, who retired as uh, the uh, CEO, uh, asked me to join um, while I was still auditor. I couldn't join while I was 
auditor. He understood that. Um, and I met him while we were auditing, actually, oh. the, uh, the organization. <laughs> you meet and friends he, while you're auditing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah because we audit, you know, I said, I talk about state, our audits of state government, but we also audit agencies that state government is giving oh, right. major contracts yeah. to. Um, and they're a huge, the Y, the old colony Y is a huge social services organization, really with a lot of emphasis on, you know, on children, yeah. on youth development, um, and a lot of trouble programs for troubled teens and all. So I really, um, I really was attracted to the, to the mission and they got completely clean audits. He didn't, you know, this was, yeah. I did, I audited him twice. That rarely happens that we audit. A, a private entity. There's usually some way that they're not following some rule. This uh, and it, it, we spend a lot of time on their finances. Um, it, but you no, know, completely, completely clean audits. Um, so we, you know, developed a relationship through that. So he asked me to join. So that's that's an exciting thing that I'm involved with. But I'm also um, doing this really fun thing right now with the Massachusetts uh, College of Art and Design. Which is the state a state school, um, uh, one of the I think of one of only one I think it's the only one in the country that is a state supported school for college uh, for art and design, and I'm on the foundation board, not the governing board, but the foundation board which raises money for scholarships for kids to go there, and our big fundraising event is an annual art auction um, in the spring. Oh. So right now. We are going through art that has been submitted by artists um, who want their work to be featured in oh. the auction. Oh, how fun. So, so you get, get to pick? Yes. Oh, so, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, yes. honey. Go yes. back to the drawing board. So, so we've got, we have 20, we have over 1,200 submissions. We have to whittle it down to 300. Wow. Uh, Is there a theme or? No, no, it's, you know, but it's modern art. Yep. It's a whole wide range of, uh, of painting and print and mixed media and sculpture and Oh, I it, love it, really this. it is it is so it is so much fun i'm learning um i'm learning a lot i'm using you know a different part of my brain than i had right. yeah. professionally right uh, and it's really um it's really great uh and i am uh, so i'm having a lot of fun i love with, that i'm having a lot of fun with that yeah yeah great people um great school with a great mission uh so much more opportunity you know the Art, it, it's it's not just, you know, the old masters, you know, painting. With, it, right. it, it, there's so many ways that technology is involved now uh, you know, with laser cutting and just so many other kinds of materials that you can, you can use. Uh, it's really, it's really cool. It's really cool. It's really incredible. Lot, so a lot of, a lot of career opportunity there is I guess what. Oh, uh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. And, and the design part, graphic design, you know. I mean, right. everybody, right. every right. every business is, you know, is looking for graphic designers, whether it's, you know, just to create your logo for your right. business mm -hmm. or, or all of your um, communication tools and, and the like. You know, so it's it's really, it, yeah, so it's really, that's really fun. Gets me in town um, every once in a while, too. Yeah. Is that like once a month Boston. or once every couple months? Or? Well, right now it's once every couple of weeks. Um, the traffic yeah. Oh, Should you take public transportation? I could. I could take the train to South Station. Or no, I could take the train and get off at Ruggles and walk. Eh. to the school. Sounds like a lot. Maybe we should introduce <laughs> her to Darren. Uh, yeah, Darren, our driver. Oh, really? Yeah. Is he yeah, you know what? Is he an Uber you, driver? Meredith, you're right. You need a driver. Yeah. It's twice a month. You need a I, driver. I, I, I no, no, I, um, I could have had a driver when I was auditor, um, but I'm such a little control freak. Mm. Uh, I get that. The, yeah, I get particularly it. I now that I, you know, okay. I, I could drive with my husband without any problem. But but that's now it. that I live alone and it's been seven years, you're in the yeah. driver's seat. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's All really right. hard. I yeah. get it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> It is lovely. It is though. so lovely. Just kick yeah, back. I can and, appreciate it. Yeah. And you don't have to deal with the stress of the the traffic. He takes no, you can you be in. productive. And actually, I have maybe I'll try it once. I mean, even just to go to Logan yeah. and come home. Maybe we'll give you a gift certificate, Darren. Yes, for being on the show. <laughs> 
He comes, he tells you, he texts you and says, I'll be at your, because you, he has your itinerary. I'll be at your place at 632. And he's there at 632, loads you up, drops you off where you need to be. And then on the return, he's watching your flight, make sure it's on time. This is where you need to go. Don't forget, you go up the escalator, down the elevator, over here, and I'll be waiting for you. You hop in the car, and then he drops you off at your And he has a big, door. comfortable oh, yeah. truck. So. It'd be nice to have people again. I yeah. miss, I miss, yes. I miss a scheduler. Yeah, I really from from my from my office life. I miss having IT people. Right, and I miss my scheduler. I bet. I'm, well, we're yeah. gonna hook you up with both of those. But now yeah. we have to go. Oh yeah, we have run out of time. <laughs> Well, this was fun. <laughs> oh, thank you. We had some laughs. This thank is amazing. You. This thank is you. Really, thank you. I really enjoyed pleasure. it. And it's great to see you both again. Yeah. And and thank you for oh, for yeah. finding me that home. Oh, so Suzanne. Exciting. Yeah. And take Ace. That's her nickname. Yes, Ace. Meredith's Ace. mother. Up on the kayak. Oh, okay. I will. Yeah. All I'm right. Well, she's we gotta go. Right oh, we gotta go. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>